Welcome to Canada's podcast. Hi there, I'm Phil Bliss. Welcome to Canada's podcast. Uh, I'm a business visionary, and I'm coming to you today from Toronto. And Canada's podcast talks to entrepreneurs across Canada. Today, we're going to meet Maximilian Berner, who's CEO and co-founder of BoxHub. BoxHub is a digital marketplace that facilitates the fast and easy buying and selling of containers for shipping, upcycling, and repurposing for affordable housing storage, retail, hospitality, or personal use. I think we're going to find it. it's an interesting day. So, Max, as you told me, I can call you, so that's fine, Maximilian, but we'll say Max. Uh, we'll, we'll stay with the North American way. So, uh, um, great to have you on Canada's podcast. Um, and uh, nice to have an international on, uh, on the podcast in terms of entrepreneurship. Um, so, what I normally do is, you know, get you to kind of give an overview of your entrepreneurial journey to date, you know, uh, why you started, you know, what made you become an entrepreneur, a um, couple of early, early, early things, uh, and, you know, what the future might be kind of thing. If you can, you know, spend five minutes just yakking away on that sort of kind of stuff. Sure. So, uh, firstly, obviously, thanks, thanks for inviting me, and pleasure to be here. Um, my entrepreneurial journey started uh, back in London, in the UK, um, in 2012. Um, at the time, I was studying at university there. Um, had done a few uh, internships at investment banks um, that made me realize that. Uh, investment banking is not what I want to do in my life, and uh, I was frantically searching for, uh, you know, what actually my job is going to be and uh, what I really want to do um, after university. And um, by chance, I got the opportunity to uh, to co-found a company while I was still at uni university. Um, one of my friends, who was working for a, a mobile carrier at the time, had an idea on how to use Bluetooth and, and QR codes and Wi-Fi um, to enhance kind of like the advertising experience for brands. And um, and uh, he asked me out of nowhere if I wanted to start that company with him. Uh, I had never worked for a startup. I, uh, I had no idea that uh, I wanted to become an entrepreneur. Um, I wasn't really planning to. But uh, it sounded like a like a great idea at the time, and so we just basically jumped in, um, and uh, and relatively quickly, you know, obviously made a, made a lot of mistakes, but relatively quickly figured out that this can actually work, um, and raised you know a few few million US dollars uh, before I even left university, um, and uh, and then I was an entrepreneur, and uh, and I never had had planned to be that, and just became that way, and um, yeah, I think. Uh, from that moment, it was clear for me that uh, that's, I think, the only thing that I'm ever going to do. And here I am now, uh, 10 years later, still an entrepreneur, um, and uh, but two companies later. You know, I know you said that there, uh, you know, so, you know, I finished school and we, you know, raised, raised a couple of million bucks and off we went. You know, everyone needs some kind of financial to start the company. They don't necessarily need a couple of million, but, you know, and it, it, without being too flippant, you know, raising two million is not the easiest thing in the world. Raising money is not the easiest thing. So, well, you know, you did it, obviously. You know, what do you think the key elements are for, you know, attracting and, and, and for, you know, for getting the confidence of those, uh, investment bankers that you decided not to be not to join, if you like. Yeah, so I think um, you know, obviously, it, it always depends on the company and your the strengths of the company. Mm -hmm. um, and I think most important is that um, you believe in the idea yourself. Um, I think nowadays, ten years later, uh, raising money at at an early stage is is easier than. Uh, what it was at the time. You have a lot mm -hmm. more funds now, a lot more early stage funds, a lot more opportunities, um, even to get early stage loans. Um, I also think it's it's you know cheaper with technology now to build companies. 
Um, but I think you know you need confidence, um, and uh, you need to you know early on I think understand what the real value is of the company and how you can transform a market, even if this is years away, uh, and you need uh, you know capital and a lot of time to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think you know early stage funding is is all about um, conveying how you change the world. Uh, building the right team around you, um, and some you know very early indications, ideally on the metric side, on you know that this is going to work. And then I think you know nowadays you you should be fine. Um, it gets more challenging nowadays on the kind of Series A, uh, Series B side, mm-hmm. um, especially in the current environment. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's that's kind of like what is key early on. So you know, what does a typical day look like for Max? You know, how do you maintain the kind of focus that's needed you know to be to be successful and to have a bit of fun along with, alongside of that yeah so i think um tenacity is important as a as a startup founder i think um you you constantly have ups and downs as a founder right things are not always going to go well uh, as a matter of fact every day is either your best day or your worst day ever um and so i think you need a lot of you know tenacity and belief um to you know go every day and and continue on the journey and continue to build even though you might have you know challenging times um that's i think very important and you need the right kind of uh, support system for you to do that, right? I think uh, your family, your friends, that you know, if you have a tough day, can you know take your mind out off of that, um, and um, and so you're ready to come back the next day and and give 100 percent again. I think that's very very important, um, and that always I had um, together with you know brilliant other founders that you know I think where you're in a situation where you make each other better, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and I can. Definitely say that not every startup day in my life was a lot of fun. Um, but if you have the right people around you, both at work and outside of work, I think um, it makes it a lot a lot easier. And so uh, that's number one. And then I think number two, you know, be as structured as possible when in in your days. So um, uh, you know, if you're a founder, then every day. I was going to ask you about routines. Do yeah, you have a specific routine uh, to get you motivated on one level. But to, to to keep the focus that's required in in early stage companies, basically. Yeah, I think this focus on a more strategic level. You know, what do you want to achieve this year? What do you want to achieve this quarter? What do you want to achieve this month, this week? Mm-hmm. Um, and then there is the how to stay on track um, every day. I think um, timing. Uh, and scheduling is incredibly important so what i do is i don't have a a a task list yeah of things to do i have a calendar um in which calendar you know every hour is booked for a specific task and that could be regular the same task the same day so let's say the first two hours of the day emails um and then you know some time in the afternoon for meetings um and then you know some time in the evening for kind of like strategic thoughts and 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 reading that you need to do things like that i think it's much more efficient um than writing a task list that you have to go through because then you everything just gets delayed and delayed and delayed and i think if you if you structure your your priorities by time every day i think you get a lot more done than i think tasks. i think that's the most important um the most important thing i do the same thing so i think you so i think you're right <laughs> yes yes so you know are we wired on entrepreneurs are we wired differently is there something is there some unique difference to the entrepreneurial persona versus others if you like yeah uh no risk aversion i think um happy to you know to take risks is is number one um Mm -hmm. i think you know you you need to have you know some idea of course to start a business but even more important is that you actually do it right and i think you know uh maybe 
getting out of your current job or you know um, that might be you know very comfortable mm -hmm. um, or your current role um, changing careers actually starting something you know I think you need to to understand that that will be very risky and there's a very high likelihood that you will fail um, and I think it needs a special type of person to accept that risk and then actually start executing knowing that they might well not be successful with it um, and and I think you know also understanding that even if you're not successful for the next month the next half year year two years no matter how long it takes uh, and you might likely still fail um, but not to see that as failure but to see that as like learnings for you and a journey for you um, and uh, and I think you know you no matter if you're successful in startups or, or not, you'll learn much more than um, in a corporate environment. And so I think, uh, you know, in summary, I think it's number one, you know, the ability to take that risk and the happiness to take that risk um, and actually jumping in and, uh, and not seeing failure as failure, but as, uh, as uh, learnings and success, even though something might not work out. What are you most, ex you know, what's the best thing in the years that you've been an entrepreneur, what's the best thing about being an entrepreneur that really, you know, that, that can't be beat, basically? Um, I think um, happy customers, of course. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you build a company that uh, that actually helps someone to do something faster or cheaper or better experience i think you know if if that works and you have people that want to use your product or buy from you i think that's a great feeling um you know some some sort of you know progress on changing the world how you want to change it um and and then i think also you know the impact that you have in a startup so and that's very different from working in a corporate yeah and so that might not not only be for the founder but Equally so for you know any any sales reps or any operations uh, operations managers any role in a company you will have much more responsibility much more impact every single day when you work at a startup and I think that's very very fulfilling um, and I think you know that's that's what I love for me as an entrepreneur to work in a startup but also what I think everybody who works for me loves um, in a startup. We were chatting earlier about you know you know, your international experience, you know startups in London, Middle East, North America. What have you learned from that in terms of being okay? So you're in Toronto now, um, not, not which is the best place. I mean that's that's a kind of dumb question. Uh, they're all different. Um, what what's you know. What have you learned by that in terms of, you know, doing business internationally, basically? Yeah, so I think um, obviously very, every, every place is very different, right? The culture is different. Um, how you conduct yourself is different. Um, even sometimes what's important for people is different. Um, I think uh, it's important to realize that when building a company. Um, but also equally important is that no matter where you are, the basics of how you can get a company off the ground are the same everywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, understanding the idea, uh, testing as much as possible, um, building an MVP as quickly as possible instead of just theor you know theorizing forever. Um, I think they're they're concepts um, of how to build a company that apply anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but then there are also, you know, cultural differences, and I think um, the combination of that um, is is really exciting. And and being aware of when you can follow the, you know, the, the standardized path, and then when you have to deviate to make it more culturally relevant and appropriate, is um, I think one of the biggest learnings of that journey. In terms of mentorship, you know, what's the best piece of advice you've received that you kind of carry around with you you know it's sort of always there in, in your in your back pocket yeah i think um the best piece of advice for entrepreneurs or young founders or anyone who thinks about getting into this industry is you know um and i mentioned this before already is you know like uh try it out 
you know, take the risk and then keep on going. You know, I think a lot of people give up too quickly when, you know, uh, the first version of the MVP is not working out. When a lot of investors tell you this is never going to work out, uh, you're doomed to fail. Um, I think, you know, if you really believe in in what you're building and how you want to, you know, change a market or how you want to change the world, uh, keep on going until you find find that right uh, that right product and and uh, product market fit. Um, and I think, yeah, too many just give up too quickly. And so it would, would be keep on going. No, I don't normally bring up the, the company so much, but mm. Box Hub, which you sort of CEO now and founder, um, it you know it, it's it's basically the container business, reselling containers, um, which I think everyone realizes have you know alternative housing possibilities as well as many other many other areas um what would you you know what are you most excited about that that this for and i'm only bringing it up because i think genuine genuinely the our audience is like oh containers oh yeah that that kind of thing you know everyone's seeing how much more they can be than just a freight thing basically not that there's anything that's pretty important as a freight thing you know <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I think Box Hub and what made me excited about the container industry is a combination of my previous experiences in the startup world, right? So my first company was a, a SaaS data platform for the marketing industry, uh, where I helped brands sell more things to people, right? Um, my second company was then the complete opposite, an online donation platform um, in the Middle East. And that I made that move at the time because I I realized that whatever I want to do and any company that I work for or found in the future, I want to have more positive impact on the world. Yeah, some sort of positive impact um, should be at the core of of any company that I work for. And so I moved to the Middle East, um, built a donation platform, had a fantastic time, um, and really saw myself, you know, continuing. Um, on that path in my future. Um, then I moved to to a nonprofit called Founders Pledge, um, and uh, and at that time I got introduced to uh, to my co-founder Philip, um, who had been working in the container industry before in the shipping industry um, mm-hmm. for Maersk, uh, which is the second largest shipping line in the world. Mm-hmm. Yep. And he came up with the concept for Box Up and introduced me to it, and I loved it because um, I think. You know, the shipping industry and the container industry are is, is one of the last industries that basically s- still center on faxes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so there's never really been much innovation um, besides maybe most recently Flexport. Um, there, you know, there's a lot of opportunity to to build product uh, to automate and to make you know the experience of that industry and customers better. So I like that opportunity from a technical perspective. Um, but I also think that um, containers are the cheapest way for you to build storage space or build a house or uh, or a vertical farm or a retail space or or things like that nowadays, you know, when you can buy them very easily through us. Um, I do think, you know, they're they're the concept of repurposing something that already exists has a very positive impact on, you know, I think sustainability um, instead of just, you know, discarding the containers, you reuse them for something else. Um, I think you make housing more affordable, you make retail space more affordable. Um, you have the opportunity to decrease the amount of uh, of runs that that container does after it comes out of the shipping, shipping industry, thereby reducing, um, uh, CO2 emissions. Um, so everything about kind of like the industry and and the product was appealing to me. Number one, because I think I saw a lot of opportunity to to build the right company and and address the challenges in that market. But also because it has so many different kind of like positive as- aspects and and positive impact to it. Okay, interesting, interesting. Um, a couple of fun ones. Mm. Uh, are you a morning or a night person? I am a night person. You're a night person. Okay, that's interesting. Most most people are, that you're you're in this kind of twenty twenty five percent. Most of them people entrepreneurs seem to be morning people. But then that's it, 
do you see a, a a difference in you know how successful they are if they're morning or or night people? No, no. I think it's just just the biorhythm thing. You know, everyone yep. everyone's got their got their, got their their own thing. Um, I think the the other one I wanted to to, to uh, I have a sense of if you had to pick one word to describe yourself, just have a fun one. What would it be? One word to describe myself: mm. uh, disciplined. Disciplined. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I, I'm. I, I understand that one. I uh, I grew up, you know, uh, in Germany um, with you know typical German parents that are very disciplined and uh, that expect a lot from you when when you're a child or in in your teenage years. Um, my father was a professional football player, soccer for uh, the North Americans here. Which team? Um, Which team? Uh, so he played for uh, for three four teams in in the Bundesliga in German football. Um, Well, Stuttgart, Freiburg, mm -hmm. Augsburg, and all. Okay. all right. um, and and so you know, uh, I was obviously supposed to also become a football player, <laughs> um, and so I played for uh, for first league youth team at the time, which basically required me to train every day after school. Um, in c certain cases, you know, twice a day um, each week, and so I got into this rhythm of obviously football, soccer team sports um but on a you know almost professional level um and so that that helped me a lot with building my discipline um and um and so i think i still see that nowadays with how i uh, how i focus wh what i focus my time on um what Uh, what I do with my time, and and I think you know I try to convey that to my team as well. Um, not only you know we discussed scheduling before, but also prioritization and things like that. I think you know if you're disciplined, um, then I think you can you know get a lot more done, and mm -hmm. uh, and especially the right things done mm -hmm. with the time. Mm -hmm. You know, what books are you reading or listening to? Or podcasts, you know, that that you want to recommend, that you say that that, that, that this makes an impact on on me. Maybe not yeah. every second, but you know that kind of thing. Yeah, um, I think uh, maybe three three mentions here. A podcast I can recommend that I listen to almost every day is called Twenty VC. Mm -hmm. um, is from a, a, a British uh, venture capital investor. He interviews every day other VCs, uh, successful entrepreneurs, everything from product to scaling a company to what investors are looking for. Uh, it's very, very insightful. Um, and the guests are, you know, the most successful investors and entrepreneurs you can find. Mm -hmm. um, so I would recommend anyone who is thinking about becoming a startup investor or entrepreneur uh, start listening to that podcast. Mm -hmm. um, and then otherwise, I think two books uh, that might have been mentioned here before, I think they're very classic, uh, classic books. Uh, one is uh, Zero to One from Peter Thiel. Um, details, uh, uh, you know, his his view, and which is partly very contrarian on, you know, how companies should be built and why they should be built and how you as a founder uh, should build that company. Uh, for example, um, he prefers uh, small markets uh, in which you can build a company that, you know, that becomes a monopoly rather than uh, what other investors focus on, which is just go after the largest markets um, with a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, if you, if you, want to hear the other side of, uh, of the coin of what other investors tell you, read that book. Um, and then also I would recommend uh, The Hard Thing About Hard Things, um, which is also a classic. Um, and I think that book helps a lot because most other books talk about how to be successful, how to be great, um, but they don't really detail what to do when uh, Excuse my language. The shit hits the fan, <laughs> um, and when uh, you know when when things don't work out, right? When you have to let people go, when you have disagreements with your co-founder, when your product doesn't work, um, when you have to pivot. Um, all of those situations, I think, are 
situations that you as a founder encounter on a day to day basis mm -hmm. and uh, and you know it, that book will really help you um, I think you know find the right uh, answers to those situations okay um, you know I said about the 25 minutes we, we, we reached it <laughs> and it was really good <laughs> uh, uh, so how can people get a hold of you I mean you know th th there was some good good stimulating stuff in here how yeah. can people get a hold of you uh, easiest would be connect with me on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. Maximilian Berner, um, and uh, uh, yeah, that that's straightforward. I will definitely uh, I will definitely connect with you. I'll definitely read your message mm -hmm. uh, if I can help in any way. Happy happy to do so, of course. Listen, it's been fantastic to have you on. It's really really been an interesting one. Um, you know, hope to see you again. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for for having me, and uh, it was was a lot of fun, and uh, uh, hopefully again at some point.